Welcome to iMovie for iPad Part 2. This is our second video in a series of three parts to uh, show the iMovie app for iPad. I'm Ben Phillips from the School of Education at Union University. Our training objectives for this series included these four bullets uh, to edit raw video footage and add titles. That was part one of our video which was uploaded previously on YouTube. This second part is going to be the part where we insert still images and other graphics into our project and finally in part three we'll add music and narration to really make our project slick. This of course that you're looking at is a keynote slide and so I'm going to exit out of the keynote app and go back to my home screen and find the iMovie app and launch iMovie for iPad. It comes up to this movie theater marquee that you see here and what we're going to do there is open up our project by tapping it. It opens up that same screen we're used to seeing with the three panels, the timeline in the lower part of the screen, the upper right hand corner is the preview screen, and in the upper left hand corner that's where all of my raw footage is. When we worked on the project in part one, we edited together three students' responses to a discussion question I had asked in class. We edited all three students' discussion responses together and put a title in at the bottom of the screen. What we're going to do today is we're going to start by putting some still images at the beginning of each of these clips. It's going to act as a way of an introduction, uh, maybe a graphic or visual that lets you know what's getting ready to come up in the next segment. If you think about the way that we do when we write a long formal paper, we oftentimes will use subheadings to uh, break up the paper and introduce what that section is about. So this is going to be in essence like a title slide or that subheading that breaks up the segments and lets you know what's coming next. In order to do that, I'm going to take a still image, uh, not video footage. And so in that black ribbon in the middle of the screen, on the far left, that icon that's selected is my video footage. I'm going to click the one that is the uh, camera there, which will bring up access to my camera roll, my photo stream, and my entire photo library. And in that, I'm going to find some still images. Now these are still images that I shot that same night of class. Uh, so simply taking my iPad 2 and turning uh, from the video camera setting over to the regular camera to take some still shots. Uh, I pull the still shots into my project the very same way, so I simply find the picture that I want, I tap it, iMovie drops it in wherever the playhead is and puts it in the timeline. When you select the picture in the timeline, it draws the yellow rubber band around it, which is going to give you the opportunity to either uh, reduce the time that that still image is shown or lengthen it. The way you can tell how much time it's shown is in the preview window at the top there in the very middle. So it says 5 seconds. I'm going to extend that to 6 seconds. And so to do that I'm going to take that um, yellow dot and simply move that with my fingertip over to the right. If you notice the time is advancing and I'll move that up, now it's going to play for 6 seconds. Let me go back to the front of my project and push play and you can watch in the preview window as it plays the 6 seconds of that still image. Now you may have noticed as that played in the still image, uh, it played in the preview window, it actually moved. Uh, what was going on there is that's what uh, is called the Ken Burns effect. Uh, as I understand, named after the famous documentary producer Ken Burns who popularized the idea of taking a still image and then zooming in or out, uh, tilting to the uh, up or down, panning left or right. And what that did as you moved around the picture with the camera is it made a still picture seem to come to life. And so uh, the iMovie version on a Mac, the full-blown version of the software, you have lots of control over the Ken Burns effect. The iMovie for iPad is a scaled-down version. You don't have quite as much control. Uh, so by default, what's going to happen whenever you put a still image in is it's going to do that effect, that Ken Burns effect. Uh, I understand iMovie for iPad has face recognition technology where it even tries to zoom in on a person's face if it recognizes that a person's there. So that's what's doing that, that motion there. What I want to do with that now is I want to put a title on top of that. So I'm going to simply double tap the clip. It brings up title style in this menu and I'm going to choose the one that says opening. From there I get the white rectangular box. I simply tap it to get my virtual keyboard and then I'm going to put in student 1 and click done. Now when I play that clip it's going to put that title with a nice black bar on the left hand side and shows me that the student one response is coming first. It's a nice cross dissolve well, then you know, into the student and there is my student is, with the title you know, his name at the bottom of the uh, screen. I want to scroll down uh, over to where my second student is and find a still image of her 
make sure that I took over her shoulder as she was riding. So I'm going to click that, extend it out to six seconds. And once I get that, I'll double click it, click the title style, choose opening, tap inside the white rectangle. Here is student two and done. And then finally, let's go down to my third student, put the playhead in the middle, and there's my still image of Quincy. I'll put that in the project, extend it out to six seconds using that white or that yellow dot, and double click in order to get title style, opening, click inside the white rectangular box, and once I get my virtual keyboard, he is student three and done. Now with my project, there is this nice uh, division between the three students' responses and a bit of an introduction to what's going to happen in each segment. The next thing I want to add is I want to put in the still image that is the actual question I had asked the students. I want this project to be completely self-explanatory and stand alone from start to finish, meaning a person could watch it and they'll fully understand what's happening in class. If you watch it right now as the project stands, you would simply hear the first student answering the question, but you don't even know what the question is that was asked. As I click back to my raw footage, uh, I had a student who videoed while I was explaining the question in class. And here's that video clip. I'm going to drop that in my project. What I noticed, though, as I went back and watched this footage is, uh, first of all, you, it's very difficult to see the actual screen behind me. So the text is from a PowerPoint slide, and I'm reading it off the screen behind me. But you can tell in this video, it's very difficult to see what on it the is PowerPoint slide behind that's on the screen. Is, uh, think about question that we're use to as I listened to the audio, it was also very difficult to hear everything I was saying. So I'm going to redo that part of my video project. What I'm actually going to do is, first of all, take that raw footage back out. I'm not going to use that. In order to do that, I simply tap and hold until the image is squeezed and moved to the top. I swipe up, and then you notice that little cloud. That just means that just disappears. We dropped it out of the project. It's not lost out of my raw footage in the upper left-hand panel. I could always pull it back in, but it's taken out of the project for the time being. Instead, what I want to do is I'm going to take a still image, a JPEG file from that PowerPoint, and put that in my project. It's going to be much easier to read the text. I took the PowerPoint slide and I made a JPEG image from within PowerPoint that was on my desktop. I then emailed it to myself so I can get it on my iPad. So I'm going to click out of iMovie and open up my email. And here's the email that contains that image. So you can tell right there embedded in the email this particular image. That's the slide I was reading. It's saved as a JPEG and I attached it to an email to myself. As I tap and hold with the iPad, I get this menu to either save that image or copy it. I'm going to choose Save Image. When I save the image, if you're wondering where that was saved to, it just saved it to your photo stream or your camera roll. And so as I go back in iMovie and click on the option there in the black ribbon for the camera and open up my camera roll, there it is as the very first option. Uh, I'd saved it earlier, so that's why I have it twice. Uh, you would likely only have it once in doing this. I'm going to click that once, and that's going to drop it down in my project. And now I have this nice, clear, easy-to-read graphic that is the exact slide I was showing in class. Now later I'm going to come back in part three and actually narrate the slide. I'm going to read the text as it's on there and embed that into my project. It's going to take a lot longer than just a few seconds to read the slide. So by default, it's giving me only five seconds. I'm going to take that yellow uh, dot and pull that out and extend that, watching that time up there. Let's go all the way, say, to 30-something seconds. There we go, right around 30 seconds. Now what's going to happen is that Ken Burns effect is going to still be, in a, still be applied, but it's going to be very, very slow because it's going to take all 30 seconds to move through the, uh, the particular image. You'll notice also that it's actually like the camera is tilting up the slide from the bottom of the text to the top, which of course seems backwards. Anytime we would be reading the slide, I need it for it instead to go from the top down to the bottom. So I'm going to stop the preview and we're going to fix that. When I select my image by putting the yellow rubber band around it, you'll notice in the preview window it's very faint. It's in the upper right hand corner. There's a little uh, rectangle option there that says end. And that's going to be where I'm going to tell the uh, iMovie program where I want to end the image and start the image. I do have to admit, though, this is very counterintuitive. It seems totally opposite of the way you would normally program it. I don't understand the logic of what's happening here with iMovie for iPad, but uh, I must be missing something. 
because what I found is I actually have to set what I want to be the beginning, which is the top of the slide, and choose end. And then I have to go to the bottom, which is what you would think would be the end of the slide, and push start. So that seems backwards to me, but it actually works. So now when I preview it, it's going to start at the top of the slide, and it's going to slowly, looks like it's scrolling down to the bottom of the slide. That'll make more sense later when I preview that uh, and have the narration under it. By the way, you also have the option with this Ken Burns effect to zoom in uh, on an image. So I can take my two fingers in the preview window, spread them apart, and it will actually zoom in on a particular spot. If you then pinch them, it will shrink back down. Uh, that would make more sense maybe if you were trying to zoom in on a particular person in a video or whatever. It wouldn't make sense with this the text. So uh, I'm going to leave it just as it is as it goes from the top to the bottom and that's going to be the way that image plays. Later we'll narrate it. The other thing I want to add is I want to put at the end of the project a nice uh, slide that has our school's uh, logo on it. So as a way I guess of kind of branding the video and showing that this comes from uh, as a part of the, my work at the university. I've done that same thing with our school's logo. I took a JPEG, emailed it to myself, uh, in my iPad I opened up the email and then saved the attachment to my camera roll. I simply now click our school's logo and there it is inside the video at the end. I'm going to extend that out to play for about 10 seconds and later what I want to do is I want to go and fix the Ken Burns so that it uh, has the right effect of zooming in at the top part and ending where I want it to end. I'll fix that a little bit later. Finally, I want to put in a still image that is a picture from the night we did this activity uh, as a way of wrapping up this uh, end of the project and saying thanks to these students. So here is the image that has all of our students in there. I'm going to extend that out for, say, about 10 seconds. Maybe, let's just do 8 seconds right there. I'm going to double tap it and then we're going to put a title on it. And there in the middle, that's that uh, style that I want. I'm going to click inside the rectangle and say thanks to these students for participating. So just another still image there with the uh, title underneath it. You see all four students in the picture and this is just a little thing as we're wrapping up the video. And then it's going to then cross dissolve into the image of our logo. I have not fixed my Ken Burns effect so you see it's not exactly zooming where I want it to. I'll do that momentarily. Finally, I want this to uh, have a black slide at the very end and I'm going to put the end as a title on there. Uh, to get a black slide there's probably lots of ways to do this. I'll tell you what I did. I put a black slide in my keynote when I was playing it in my keynote, I simply took a screenshot uh, using the iPad feature that allows you to take the screenshot, which then, of course, puts that in my camera roll. So I have this solid black screen. I'm going to let that have the one that has the title on it that represents the end. Let's see, here's ending. I'll put in the text the end. And we're really starting to finish this out because it's going to have that slide thanking the students who participated. It's going to go into a slide that has uh, the logo and it has the nice Ken Burns effect. And finally, then it'll have the end. Uh, we're going to later put some music that will represent the end as well and uh, go from there. So what we've done is we took some still images and incorporated that into our videos. At the same time, we have this nice JPEG that was a PowerPoint slide. I have the school logo at the back and then a black slide, kind of like a placeholder, just allows me to put in the text the end. And uh, from there, we will begin to put some narration to our video and then we will also have some music at the end that will be uploaded in part three. Part three. Part 